Okay, let's be real. This is a topic nobody really wants to think about. But surviving a nuclear blast, believe it or not, it's governed by physics, not just pure chance. So what does it actually take? Well, it turns out knowledge is way more important than luck. And that's exactly what we're going to break down today. You know, our whole understanding of this threat, it really began on a single fateful day, August 6th, 1945. That's when the first atomic bomb was used in warfare over Hiroshima, Japan. It literally changed the world forever. And if we want to understand how to survive something like that, we first have to get a handle on what was actually unleashed. So here's how we're going to tackle this. First, we'll look at the anatomy of the blast itself. Then we'll dig into the three core threats you'd be up against. After that, we'll cover the principles of fallout protection, what a life-saving shelter actually looks like, and finally, we'll wrap up with radioactive cleanup. All right, first things first, let's get down to the fundamentals. I mean, to have any chance of surviving the blast, you've got to understand it, right? So where does all that incredible, almost unimaginable power even come from? Well, it all starts way down at the atomic level. This is where things get really wild. It's all about something called a fission reaction. Basically, you take a heavy atom, like uranium-235, and you hit its nucleus with a neutron. That split releases a ton of energy and, crucially, more neutrons. Those new neutrons then go and split more atoms, which release even more neutrons. You see where this is going? It's a chain reaction that just explodes exponentially. And the physics behind this? Well, it's probably the most famous equation in the entire world. Yep, E equals mc squared. All it really means is that energy and mass are, well, they're two sides of the same coin. You can turn a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of physical stuff, of mass, into a truly mind-boggling amount of energy. So, how mind-boggling are we talking? Get this. In the bomb that hit Hiroshima, only about 0.6 grams of matter was actually converted into energy. That's, that's less than the weight of a single paperclip. But that tiny little bit of mass unleashed a blast equivalent to 15,000 tons of TNT. Just let that sink in. That's the raw power of e equals mc squared. Okay, so all of that incredible energy has to go somewhere, right? When it's unleashed, what are you actually facing? It's not just one big kaboom. The threat really breaks down into three very distinct forms. Take a look at how that energy is distributed. A full 50% of it, half, is the blast wave. That's just raw kinetic force. Then you've got another 35% that becomes this blinding light and scorching heat, which we call thermal radiation. And that last 15%, well, that's the one everyone fears the most, the invisible threat of nuclear radiation. So let's break those down a bit. The thermal radiation, we're talking about a fireball hotter than the surface of the sun. It causes just devastating burns and starts fires everywhere. Then comes the blast wave. It's a crushing wall of air pressure moving faster than sound with hurricane force winds right behind it that just flatten everything. But it's that third threat, the nuclear radiation, that's the most persistent. Look, the initial blast and heat are unsurvivable if you're too close, but the lingering radioactive fallout, that's the long-term threat that you can actually prepare for and survive. And that right there brings us to the absolute core of survival, understanding the rules for protecting yourself from that fallout. And here's the good news. It's not magic. It's just physics. And it all boils down to three incredibly simple principles, three words you need to burn into your memory, time, distance, and shielding. Seriously, everything about survival is just an application of these three things. Now, of those three, time is without a doubt your greatest ally. Here's why. Radioactive fallout particles are unstable. They decay. That just means they get less and less radioactive over time. And this decay isn't slow and steady. It's exponential. The danger level drops incredibly fast. The first 72 hours, those first three days, are by far the most hazardous. The longer you can just wait it out in a safe place, the safer the outside world gets. And that, of course, brings us to the single most critical piece of survival gear you could have, the fallout shelter. This is where you put all those principles, time, distance, and shielding, into real-world practice. This really illustrates the shielding part perfectly. The official guidelines say you need about 60 centimeters of concrete, or 75 of brick, or almost a full meter of packed-down dirt to effectively block the most dangerous radiation. The takeaway is simple. The more dense stuff, the more mass you can put between you and the fallout, the bet. But, you know, a shelter is way more than just thick walls. 
a proper shelter has some really ingenious design features. Like the entrance, it has a right angle turn. Why? It's so clever. Radiation travels in straight lines, so a simple turn like that can't be penetrated. The ventilation system is also absolutely crucial. You need special filters to keep the radioactive dust out, and just as important, a manual hand crank for when the power inevitably goes out. They even think about the plumbing. A backflow valve on the sewer line stops contamination from backing up into your safe space. Okay, so you've safely sheltered, time has passed, and radiation levels outside have dropped. But there's one final step, dealing with the invisible threat that is now settled on, well, everything, and that step is decontamination. So what exactly is external contamination? It's really important to understand this. It's not some kind of mysterious energy field. It's a physical substance. It's literally radioactive dust and tiny particles that have settled out of the air and are now clinging to surfaces, including your clothes and your skin. And the key thing here is because it's a physical thing, it can be physically removed. Okay, I need you to really listen to this next part because it might be the single most life-saving piece of information in this entire breakdown. Just by taking off your outer layer of clothing and sealing it in a bag, you can get rid of up to 95% of the radioactive contamination on you. 95%. That is, by far, the single most effective thing you can do to decontaminate yourself. The whole procedure is really simple and just logical. Step one, carefully take off your outer clothing and accessories. Step two, seal all of it in a plastic bag to keep that dust contained. And step three, wash your hair and any skin that was exposed with plain old soap and water. That's it. It's basically just a very, very important shower. So in the end, surviving an event like this isn't about some Hollywood action movie fantasy. It's about calmly applying knowledge. It's about understanding the science, knowing the threats, and sticking to those simple principles of protection, which kind of leaves us with a final thought to chew on, right? Nuclear technology is one of the greatest, most awesome powers humanity has ever unlocked. So isn't understanding it the very first and maybe most important step to being protected from it?